Welcome back. Let's talk more about inheritance here. In this one, we're going to take a look at inheritance and the use of constructors. This is a must know how if you're going to be extending a class. You have to understand how the constructors of the class come into play when you go to run your program. So let's take a quick little example here and we're going to learn about this new word called super. Nice easy command for you to use. So here we go. There's a few parts to this one. Here's a nice, simple set of classes to use as a little example for you. Here's class A. There's the constructor, just prints out constructor A. There's a method called test, says test from class A. Here's class B. It extends class A, and it has its constructor that says constructor B, and it has a method test, override it that says test from class B. So that's pretty easy two classes to get a hang of it here. And here's my runner class to show you something. Now, if I just run this, class A, class A, you know that when you say new class A, this will create an instance of class A and run the constructor for class A. So when I actually give this a run, it says constructor A, and that came from here, right? It went and ran the constructor for class A. Now let's do the same thing with class B. And of course, because you don't know any better, you're going to say, well, I already know what it's going to do. Well, let's see what it's going to do. Let's change this to make a class B, class B. And now I give this one a run. And surprise, surprise, you probably get a little more output than you expected there. Now here's what's going on. Obviously, it did run the constructor for class A. Now, an easy way to sort of remember why is this. When you go to make an object a class B, it's extending class A. So, in an effect, it does have to run the code that would help make a class A object. And so, there's a line here that you don't see happening that is actually being put in there for you. And this line is super. So you didn't have to write it there, but it's nice to write it there for now. Just to remind yourself that line is there. And what that line does is that line calls the constructor of your super class. And the super class to class B is class A. So when you go to make a new instance of class B, it calls super, and that will be the first thing it does. That's in there. So it jumps to class A. It runs the constructor of class A, which printed out constructor A. And that's what you see there. And then it finishes and then it jumps back and it writes that out constructor B, which is the second line it then runs. Now, this takes place when you have an empty constructor. So the default constructor here, no parameters. Super is automatically written. So whether I put it there or not, it doesn't matter. But for now, I'm going to write it there. When you do use super, it has to be the first line of the constructor. That is a rule. Okay. If you try putting it second, I can see what happens here. I'm pretty sure it'll see me in error here. Call to super must be the first statement. Okay. So pretty good. So that's a rule you have to know. Super is the first line. Okay, and this ends up working. Now it gets a little trickier, okay, for this next part. For the next part, I'm going to show you the same example with class X and class Y. So here's class X. Class X has an integer value. When I make class X with its constructor, you'll notice here no default constructor. So in the case of class B, just the empty constructor, this doesn't exist for class X. Okay, to make an instance, you have to give it a number, which is then assigned to the class field value. And then I have a little method here, show value. Now class Y extends class X. Now class Y, it's going to store two values and a word. So I've gone and made this constructor, class Y, integer num, num, string S. 
Now, I have an error, and here's the problem. It says constructor class X and class Y cannot be applied. Now, what's going on here is you have to remember what the first, this is sort of being inserted there, but it doesn't work because it says constructor class X cannot be applied, applied requires an integer. This line that is sort of magically just there for you doesn't work because there is no constructor that takes in no parameters. Class X only has a constructor that takes in an integer parameter. This has to be called by class Y. Since class Y extends class X, you have to call the constructor for class X when you write the constructor for class Y. But because this one that won't work, which would have been automatically there for you, you actually have to write the proper constructor. Now, check this out. I'm going to take this original code out of here, and here's what I'm going to do. They've given us num, num2, and string. Now, let's just try to use common sense here and say value should be num, value2 should be num2, and word should be string s. Here's how you end up using the constructor. Keep in mind, the constructor for class X takes in num and sets it to value. So what I do here is I do this, super, and I pass it off num. Now notice, no red lines, no problems here. So this number gets passed in to the constructor of the super class. So it jumps here, the number comes in, and it sets value equal to that number. And so we've now taken care of the first value. Okay, I actually shouldn't have written that there in the first place. That would have been a little better there. Okay, I only added an extra variable called value two. Now that number gets assigned to value. Now what do you do with these other two parameters for your constructor? Probably you do something like this. Value two equals num two and word equals s. And now this object is going to be instantiated or created properly and it's going to have word set, value set, and it uses the super class's constructor to set the value of value. Once again, if you try making class y without calling super, it's not going to let you do it. Okay? You're required for the constructor of your super class to run. Okay, so you have to run it, and if it's a constructor that takes in parameters, you have to give it parameters. So what you often see here is if you see classes extending off in each other, you'll see the constructors might end up growing in complexity, because maybe the new objects uh, require new information to help them run. Okay, it's just a maybe. So you'll see here one parameter in, one parameter in. Now, if we look back at our sample code for our other projects we have, we'll try to re-emphasize this idea because this can be a little tricky, right? You're now hopping between classes with constructors. Let's take a peek at our student class here. I had person. Notice the person constructor, only way to make a person. Give it a string and give it an integer, name and age, right? And it sets it. Let's see how a student is made. Well, a student has added student ID, and in the constructor, this programmer wants the student ID to be required. So when I make a student, I need to take in a name and an age because I need that to run the super, the constructor of the super class, and give it name and age. Then after that's done, well, that would pop over to person, that's going to run this and set name and age properly. And then when that's finished, it can come back. It'll take the student ID and assign it to this new student ID variable that's part of person. And then I just do a little print out here, created student. If you take this out, no, nope, can't do it. You can't make a student unless you call the constructor of the parent. And so that's sort of that one there. If you look at the LCD screen example, same idea. 
We have screen, it takes in a device model. So when I do a color screen, the constructor, I still have to take something in so I can call the constructor of its superclass and get it going. Okay, but no extra variables that time, right? I'm just passing it through. So you may want to look at these examples that are in here. They all sort of use that similar idea. And remember when you go back, if you're going back to our very first example, why didn't we do it for class A? Remember for class A and class B, this constructor has no parameters. And when you have no parameters, this is written for you, sort of, behind the scenes. So it doesn't give you an error here. It's just going to call the default no parameter constructor for you for class A. Anyways, that was a bit of a long video for that little topic, but it's obviously an important one because if you don't know that rule, it almost makes it impossible to build off of classes and their constructors and you're just stuck. So whenever you're writing your constructors for extended classes and you get those red lines, remember super should be on the first line and super should be taking in parameters that the super constructor needs to take in. Thanks for watching. We're going to build on this, believe it or not, even a little bit more with a little fine detail rule or two.